from health care to education, from jobs to crime, what impact do illegal immigrants have on the Tennessee Valley? WDEF News 12 sets out to answer these questions with a special presentation, Immigration, the Cost of Freedom. Hello, I'm John Mercer. Welcome to our special report, Immigration, the Cost of Freedom. The controversial issue of immigration is one of the hottest topics in our country these days, with everyone from politicians to regular folks voicing their opinions. With Congress currently battling over an immigration bill, we here at WDEF News 12 have decided to explore this hot button issue, beginning with a look at who makes up the immigrant population here in the Tennessee Valley. WDEF News 12's Rebecca Cruz brings us that story. The signs are everywhere. The Hispanic and Latin population here has grown tremendously over the last couple of decades. Nearly every Latin American and Hispanic country is represented here from Brazil to Spain and of course Mexico. But contrary to popular belief, there's a rather slim Mexican population here. As a matter of fact, there are more Guatemalans here in Chattanooga than Mexicans. Brazilian-born Nietzsche Lopez runs a Latin American consulting firm. Lopez believes Guatemalans were first recruited to work here back in the mid-80s. When the Guatemalan people start to come to work in seaboard farms. How many Guatemalans and other immigrants are actually here is a mystery. Estimates range from a few thousand to tens of thousands, but many immigrants are simply passing through. They come here, and then from here they go to LJ Yard, and then they go to Rome Yard. They are very mobile. INS attorney David Elliott explains work brings them here, but something else sent them looking. And sometimes the need to work is caused by situations in their country. Uh, there was a civil war in Guatemala in the 1980s and early 90s. Um, El Salvador and Honduras have had some civil strife that have sent people packing, basically, um, and they decided to come here and work. Tierza Paucar came here from Lima, Peru for an education. Most immigrants in her circle are here legally. They are, you know, working hard to, you know, to succeed and they don't want to just take everything, you know, free or for granted. They want to succeed and, you know, contribute to society. Cuban-American Marisol Jimenez helps assimilate immigrants into our society through La Paz de Dios, or God's peace. Jimenez tries to prevent newcomers from running afoul of their neighbors. The families that do double and triple up do it because of survival. Jimenez and explains many continue living the way they did in their mother countries, not to segregate themselves from others, but to surround themselves with what's familiar. They are here not to get a free ride from our country. They're here to work. They're here to be productive members of our society. They want to do what is expected of them, but at the same time, they want to take care of their families. Very good. Regardless of how or why they are here, immigrants are immediately struck with a huge language barrier. Many of them come from a Mayan dialect, and they, even though the uh, language of their countries, the official language is Spanish, they may not be fluent or know how to read or write in Spanish. Marta so, uh, Jones directs a Chattanooga State program that teaches immigrants English and adult education. Some students will go on to get their GEDs, others will learn English and how to access services. I had to do bank accounts and things like that and also um, we teach them uh, workshops on uh, home violence, alcoholism, uh, teenage pregnancy and other social issues. La Plaza Comunitaria or the Community Plaza is partially funded by the Mexican government. It's outreach on the Mexican government's part to help those coming here assimilate to our culture. As Rebecca pointed out, the immigrant population in the Tennessee Valley is diverse, and so are the jobs they perform. But when it comes to immigrants and jobs, lots of questions arise, especially about undocumented aliens keeping wages down. WDEF News host Bill Mitchell tackles this subject. Illegal immigration is organized crime, and there are so many people making so much money from this organized crime, they will do or say anything to marginalize people who attempt to stop it. D.A. King of Marietta is a former insurance executive who now travels all over the country talking about illegal immigration. He fixes the blame on American industry and our political leaders. The intentionally constructed mindless myth that there are jobs Americans will not do is, is very easily disproved. What jobs are undocumented immigrants doing? In North Georgia and Southeast Tennessee, there are large numbers in the construction industry, in farming, textile plants, many working in lawn care, poultry processing, and restaurants. Understandably, maybe, these employers are reluctant to share hard data and, in fact, generally refuse to return calls. 
As for immigrants, both documented and illegal, it means an average of $480 a week in salary. Are native-born Americans losing out? There are no jobs Americans will not do. There are wages on which Americans cannot live with any dignity in their own country. Although Whitfield County has the largest Hispanic population in the area, its unemployment rate is still not high. The community is absorbing the newcomers, and the carpet mills, for one, would have a hard time filling those jobs if federal laws force the undocumented workers out of the country. Our economy would suffer um, in all sorts of ways because uh, folks would be leaving who are doing some pretty important work and also paying a lot of money into our local economies. D.A. King agrees that forcing the illegals out all at once would be a burden, but he's also leading a campaign to demand that the government halt the influx immediately. Americans are being forced to compete with Mexico's poorest people. Uh, our government is intentionally allowing our wages to go down by leaving our borders open. But Hispanic workers in this area, many from countries other than Mexico, are already taking a second step. Do immigrants, both legal and undocumented, take jobs from Americans? Yes, they do. But only because they'll work for less, and business loves that. And have immigrants forced wages down? Yes, in some occupations, and research shows they're not likely to go back up again. In a recent CBS report, it stated that illegal immigration costs taxpayers $26 billion a year. When we return, a look at the financial impact immigrants have on education and the health care system.